Well, hello everyone. So today is going to be the first uh, Q&A with Lindsay, if you will. Um, I've heard from a lot of you. Thank you so much for sending me emails and um, making comments on the blog. It's been really great to hear um, from all of you and share uh, a little bit more about what's been going on. But there seem to be some common themes with some of the questions. So I thought it might be kind of fun for me to actually talk about it instead of just uh, writing you all individually. So we're going to be going through a series of questions and hopefully it will help you learn a little bit more about what I've been up to and what life in the southern part of France is like. Hmm. That's actually a tough one. I would probably have to say, apart from meeting new people, which of course is always the best part of traveling, would have to be um, learning more about the regional specialties. I absolutely love trying new dishes and new drinks, and I've actually uncovered quite a few. Um, one of the things that's actually been the most interesting has been sampling all the different um, regional drinks. There actually are quite a few. Some of you may be familiar with something called Kier. It's an aperitif, so a before dinner drink. Um, and I sampled that for the first time, the last time I was in France in Grenoble. Um, it's usually white wine um, and you add in a creme de cassis or some other flavor liquor and it's um it's very yummy it's very sweet but you have to be careful because if you haven't eaten it will go right to your head um but i've been able to introduce that to some of the other assistants which is neat and something that i saw everyone drinking when i first got here was came in this glass and it was bright green so you know i inquired as to what it was and it is something called perrier mont it is perrier water which is a naturally carbonated um, water bottled water and they add in creme de menthe and so it's a very refreshing light drink that a lot of people drink in the afternoon and the first couple of weeks i was here it was so warm that having a perrier mont in the afternoon was was very refreshing, I must say. And one of the other really neat drinks that I have sampled is something called Picon. Picon, P-I-C-O-N. And it is a liqueur of sorts. There's a lot of orange in it, as well as um, some flowers from France and other herbs and whatnot. Um, and you serve a little bit of Picon over a white beer and it, it, it makes the beer sweeter but it's really yummy so um, that's been really fun and then trying some of the regional specialties with the special sauces on their meats and things like that um, there is a place right around the corner from where I live that actually serves this side dish it's tomatoes and onions and green peppers and it's really really yummy it's not ratatouille which is another um, regional specialty specialty or a specialty of France in general I should say um, but it's quite yummy and you can put it over rice or pasta and, and any type of meat so that's been good so I have definitely been enjoying the gastronomy of France. Well apart from my family and friends all of you obviously uh, the thing that I think I've been missing the most is just the familiarity of the place. Um, you know, we often take for granted where we live and, and how we live, um, and it's been definitely adjustment. The pace of life has been the most difficult to get acquainted with. I wrote about that last week. Um, you know, I'm finally starting to settle in and actually start to enjoy the rhythm of life here, but it was definitely uh, an adjustment period. You know, we're, we're constantly on the go in America and everything is so readily accessible to us 24-7 that um, having to wait to be able to get a bite to eat or to have to plan my grocery shopping around the fact that they have the siesta um, in the afternoons and that everything closes on Sunday and things. Once you embrace it for what it is, you start to enjoy it a lot more, but there's definitely an acclimation period. <laughs> so I've definitely been missing that. And of course my Dunkin' Donuts coffee, cause you know, being a New England girl through and through, I love my Dunkin's. <laughs> Oh sure, I did comment on that. Um, 
you know, as all of us have this stereotype of what French women in particular are like, it's very true. They are just constantly polished and so well poised and, you know, ever so much the ladies. And, you know, yes, thank you. I do think that I dress um, nicely. Someone commented on that. But there definitely is um, a difference between my style and French women. Um, the biggest one being right now with my age group, skinny jeans. Oh my goodness, do they love their skinny jeans. Sometimes I don't even know how they get into these pants. They're so tight. <laughs> um, and also footwear. Footwear is making me stand out. Um, I tend to go for the more comfortable shoes. They don't necessarily always have to be that attractive. Here, fashion is definitely the number one priority. So I'm, when the weather's nice and warm, I'm seeing a lot of goddess sandals and um, ballet um, flats, if you will. And um, when it's a little bit cooler or rainy, really high boots. They love the knee high boots and I only have ankle boots with me. So I'm definitely standing out. And then um, the other big thing is, which I did know last time, is they wear a lot of monochromatic schemes. So a lot of dark colors, a lot of blacks um, and browns um, from head to toe. But, uh, you know, it's kind of fun to to see the differences and, you know, slowly start to change the way that you dress so that you can fit in a little bit more. But you know what? I am who I am and um, I may stand out. You may know I'm a foreigner from a mile away, but... Hey, I'm here, I'm learning, and I'm enjoying myself, and that's what uh, is the most important. Okay, so a little bit more about work. My commute. It depends. <laughs> um, if I take the train, which I often do, um, it is about a not even 15 minute train ride, um, followed by a 10 to 15 minute walk to the school from the train station. And then you have to factor in that it's about a five to 10 minute walk to the train station from where I live in Poe. Hence the reason why I wanted to live in the city center because a lot of my friends are living much further out and it would make for an extremely long commute. So in total, it usually takes me about 45 minutes from door to door. Um, but I have to factor in that because Nye is such a small town, uh, the trains don't always stop there. So even though I may not have to be at the school till say 8 in the morning, if I'm going to be there for my 8 o'clock class, I have to take the 6.57 train. So yes, I get there extremely early. Um, but that's okay. And then in the evenings, it's kind of funny because the trains always run on time first thing in the morning for the morning commute. And then somewhere along the way, the train always seems to run late. So when I'm leaving work and trying to head back into Poe, um, I usually try to take the 544 train back to Poe so it would get me home just after six. Um, but oftentimes that train runs late. <laughs> so sometimes I get to just hang out at the train station with the other people waiting for the train to show up. So that's an experience. Um, but I have been very fortunate. There are some very nice teachers at my school school and one of the teachers actually lives in Po but works in Nye which is really quite the reverse of what almost everyone else does because they live in the countryside and commute to the city to Po um, but she has offered to give me rides on Monday and Friday mornings so instead of having to get up really really early to catch the train I now hitch a ride with her and that takes about 20 minutes and it's not bad she's very nice she only speaks French but she's very patient with me so especially first thing in the morning when it's still pitch black out. <laughs>